Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to be doing a range test light on the new Thule Motion XT XL on my Model Y. Stay tuned. Hey, ladies and gents, welcome back. Uh, so today, we have a video where I'm going to set up, install my new Thule Motion XT XL roof carrier for my Model Y. Uh, my family downsized from a Honda Pilot to a new Model Y, which I don't regret for a second. And one of the things that we had to take into account was taking vacations and long trips, which we require more luggage um, for my two children and my wife when we go on a trip together for a week. And having something to put skis in or luggage or just a pack full of junk while we're going to be going on a long trip. And so this roof carrier seemed to really fit the bill for what I wanted. Now, I ordered this back when before COVID hit and it's been on back order. So I actually just received it recently. So it's been a really, really long time um, since I ordered it. So anyway, get into the details. So... For this test today, it's going to be a light test. I call it a light range test because I'm only traveling a short distance. Uh, just to get an idea of having a car charge roughly the same amount on the same exact route with the same weather conditions and within the, almost the same amount of time, right? So doing the first leg of the trip with no roof carrier on, recording the watt hours per mile and the range traveled and then immediately putting the roof carrier on and repeating the same exact trip and if you as you can see on my screen here um, this is the trip that I routed out uh, it's up a stretch of I-95 just outside of Philadelphia and it's relatively flat and it's really straight so it's a really good candidate for just putting an autopilot on going up turning around, doing a U-turn, coming back the same way, and then <clears throat> repeating the process. So for anybody who doesn't want to stick around for all the other details, uh, here's going to be the answer. So the first leg of the trip, we were able to achieve uh, a 16.2 mile round trip. Uh, we used uh, four kilowatt hours of electricity and we travel we uh, averaged 247 watt hours per mile so not too bad um, i put autopilot only 55 miles an hour stayed in the right lane it's uh, a relatively warm day it was 59 degrees when i took the first leg of the trip and um it was like 62 degrees i think it was on the trip with the carrier uh, a little bit later and then on the route, second leg of the trip with the carrier, you can see uh, we used exactly the same amount of uh, energy. We traveled, traveled the same exact distance and watt hours per mile increased by 19 watt hours uh, per mile. So, you know, this, like I said, this is a light trip because I only went 16 miles round trip. When you go, there's going to be a lot of factors coming into play. If you have, you know, uh, a windy day, um, you're traveling faster. I want to do something relatively simple uh, that had relatively, like, very comparable, um, you know, factors into what was being tested. So anybody who just came here for the result, there you go. You have it. There's a difference of uh, 19 watt hours per mile when doing a very small sample size, which is why I call this video light. So if you want to stay tuned for the rest of the details and see me set up the carrier and have me uh, talk about what I'm going to be doing during the trip, uh, stay tuned. Today, we're going to bring you a range test using the Thule Motion XT XL on my Model Y. In order to do the test, first we're going to take a trip in my Model Y, reset an od uh, odometer, and we're going to do a loop run on I-95 and come back, put it on autopilot, and that's going to be our base, so we can ch check how much 
uh, efficiency we lose while having the roof carrier on. So right now, what I'm going to do is set up my screen here. I created a new trip that has a, a name called no carrier, so no rooftop carrier. We're gonna do a little loop and then we will record the uh, watt hours per mile. And when we're finished, we'll do the same thing again with the roof carrier. So we're almost through the first leg of this test. Uh, we're doing 55 miles an hour on autopilot on I-95. The relatively flat stretch of I-95. Um, when I left, the temperature was 59 degrees. So I want to give you a little idea of the wind noise factor without the carrier on the roof. So I'm just gonna lift my camera up with the microphone towards the roof of the car. So you might be able to hear that there is slight wind noise just from having a roof rack uh, on the car. Um, it's not really that bad. I don't really notice it when I'm driving the car. And if you sit there and pay attention to it without the radio, then uh, you certainly can hear some wind noise. So I'll turn the camera back on when we had the roof carrier on and um, I'll give you the same kind of audio test. We are back from the first leg of this test. Uh, as you can see here, we have traveled 6.2 miles and averaged 247 watt hour miles. Um, you can note that it's 59 degrees Fahrenheit. I do have the fan on, on my air conditioner, but not the air conditioner. And the most of the trip was pretty flat. So now I'm going to get that roof carrier on top of the car, get it locked down, and then we're going to repeat the whole process and then compare it. As you can see here, we have the Thule Motion XT XL box, which is going to go on that right there. So I want to give this a little look over. I just took this out of the large box that it came in. And if you want to see what we have here, is there's a cardboard box to keep the top from being crushed. There's a package which has the clips which attach it to the roof racks. There was a set of keys. The box came locked and the keys were taped to the side of the box. So I took them off, unlocked it. So it seems pretty straightforward um, by looking at the directions here we can see that it's seems to be a hopefully pretty straight process of just putting the box on top of the car putting these clips on attaching them down and clicking them into place to lock them in so I'm going to proceed to do that now and then I will repeat my range test with the cargo carrier on the roof of the car. going to give you a look of what these clips look like so these clips look like this 
you can see that you spin the top to open the clamp, the claw, right? And when you do that, it will look like this. And if you look inside the carrier, there is a slide here, which you can move forward or back to align with your roof rails on your car, your roof rack. And so it's just a matter of these clips here going in and clipping in to these holes here. So when you sit it, seat it correctly, you'll hear a click in here where these clips go in and the hooks just go through the opening and around here. So it's pretty straightforward and it seems pretty simple. It's a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. And a little tip, I opened my hatch all the way and that's how I determined how far back to put um, the roof carrier. So I wanted to have it pretty centered and not too one far one way or the other. So that seems like it looks pretty centered to me with the car. So we're gonna finish attaching this and then we will take the second leg of the trip. So this is what she looks like after mounting to the top of the car. Not a bad looking roof rack. You can see here, the model. It is one of the four available motion models from Thule. I'll give you a look from the front. And from this side. So now we're gonna unplug and do a repeat of the test. So just to reset here before we go on the second leg of the trip to test with the cargo carrier. We reset our trip. We renamed it with carrier. It is now 63 degrees, so the temperature has risen about four degrees, but it's not too much different. And the car has 235 miles of range versus roughly 249, I think it might've been. We'll double check that when we look at the video. And I'm gonna repeat the same test and we will check back with the results. We are almost through the second leg of the test and just like I did on the first one, I'm going to raise my microphone and my camera up to the roof so you can hear for yourself the wind noise difference with the carrier. So I don't know if you can hear the same thing I can hear. However, it is slightly more noisy because of the extra resistance of the roof carrier. So to be expected, a little more windy. Once again, if you have the radio on or you're talking to people, it does not seem like it's too annoying. It is on par with any other roof carrier I've ever used in my life. So. There's that. So we just conclude the second leg of the test with the roof carrier. And you can see that we achieved 266 watt hours per mile. The temperature is 62 degrees. So pretty close to what it was when we left for this leg of the trip. And the same exact distance traveled because I traveled the same exact route. So I want to wrap this up and go talk about it to finish up the video. In closing, uh, what I'd like to say is that I highly recommend at least you look at the Tooley Motion uh, product line if you want a roof carrier. Uh, it's so easy to set up and install. If you look at the video and you look at how quick I put it on and uh, set it up from scratch, it was pretty simple. The hardest part is lifting it onto the roof. It weighs 55 pounds. So uh, as you can see in the video, I put it on my head and kind of like shimmied it onto the roof rack. Uh, you really you should have two people so you don't hurt yourself. Um, 55 pounds, I figured I'd just throw it up there. Uh, setting it up, putting the clamps on the way to design was very simple. They click into place. It, you don't really need the instructions. Um, you know, it's self-explanatory. I'm not going to get into the minutiae details of how to put it on because... As you can see, if you buy one, it's 
as simple as sticking the clamps in and tightening them uh, until they feel like they're secured tightly. And there's four clamps. Uh, some notes, the roof carrier does open from both the driver's side and the passenger side, which is nice. Uh, an oddity is that the key has to stay in the lock in order to keep it unlocked, which is a little weird. So if you want to keep it open while you're packing stuff and like run back into the house, you have to leave the key out there, which is a little uh, annoying because, um, you know, if somebody can just come over and steal the key or, you know, have the key and steal your stuff while you're trying to run back and forth and um, load a car. But not a deal breaker. Uh, the wind noise a little bit increased, which is to be expected. Um, I'm probably will do another test in the future where I actually load this thing up with gear. We like to go skiing. We have to go to the mountains. We have to go to the beach. So we'll probably use this for all those things over time. And if there's any meaningful uh, statistics or information that I could share, I'll make another video. For now, I just want to do a video with uh, going a short distance. That was relatively uh, uh, no drastic factors that would determine comparing uh, the same ride um, with the carrier on and versus with the carrier off. So that's what I showed uh, in the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see more videos and you're interested, uh, click the like button and subscribe. If not, I don't care, man. It's all good. Have a good day and uh, check back in. Peace.